Speak to a Sheik Oatman when you can, brother. Oh, Sheikh. 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 It's Sheikh. Like Shay. Hey. Sheikh. And then Sheikh. Sheikh. What does that mean? Someone earlier super chatted like Sheikh Bobby. Yeah, I mean a Sheikh is somebody that has a lot of knowledge, right? He's like a scholar. He's Sheikh. is an Imam, for example, would be like a preacher, right? But the Sheikh is somebody that really dedicated his life to study Islam. Okay, okay. Speak to when you can, Brother Grayson. He is a revert with vast knowledge of Islam. Oh, I didn't know he's a revert. He's not a revert. No, he's not. Okay. You will not regret speaking with him. God bless. Mel Sill. Grayson, are you happy? They keep saying you ain't because you're learning about Islam. Also, love you, Bobby. Been watching you for a couple years now. Ah, it's a long time. Marshall, thank you, bro. I don't, I don't know who's saying I'm happy. I'm not happy, but I'm very happy, especially that um, I've been learning a lot over the past six months, a few years, especially the past few months. So that's my favorite thing to do. Fairy, Faria, Grayson, is your journey based on better your current life or your afterlife? Your findings will depend on this. Deep. You know. I want to say, well, both. However, I primarily right now, you know, if I'm really being honest, it's I'm interested in religion because to better this life, which I mean, being completely honest, it's like I think it would be a bonus if if the afterlife is really just heaven or hell, like in my head. Part of me is like, is that is that metaphorical? Especially from like psychedelic experiences, I wonder like, is this being metaphorical? Like for the Quran doesn't seem to suggest that it's metaphorical, but in my head, I'm like, is there is this really about the afterlife, or is it? I don't know if you've ever had this thought. I'm sure you have. Like, or is this about right now? Because I do, I do in a sense like I see people who, when it starts to rain. Like they get like sad, like because it's raining, and I'm like, you're maybe hell is in a bit of a hyperbole. But, like, I would hate to be in your head where like you literally just get sad if it starts to rain. Like, I oh. have trained myself to enjoy everything and be in a space of, I don't know, gratefulness as much as I possibly can. And I'm like, is this being metaphorical for it? living in hell? Like when you when you commit sins, you are living in hell. You're you're like a slave. So I would say it's to better my current life, and I and I hope it also the afterlife as well. But I I, I have I'm not a hundred percent I have faith in like that the afterlife is heaven or hell. Menatala Elka Elka Sas, if your dad whom you love tells you to show him your love and respect through certain actions like cleaning your room and obeying your mother whom he loves, would you challenge yourself to do everything he tells you? Would you do the same with God to show him your devotion? I would. Uh, no, I would not challenge my dad. So I guess if you believe that the Quran says, I think she's saying, following Muhammad, following the messenger. If God says that in the Quran, if you believe it's from God, then why not do it? But yeah, it makes sense. But I guess first you have to believe that God actually says that. I mean, if you believe again in the Quran, then the Quran says that. So. Yeah, yeah. Faiza R. Grayson, what holding you back from taking Shahada? Um. I always answer that first. I guess okay. just fear, honestly, just fear, fear of like making a commitment. That's really it. And like giving this a little bit more time to ensure that I really understand what I'm getting myself into. But it, it's it's when I really ponder it, it's just it's just like fear of my life, like what that means. <laughs> what is the fear exactly about? What comes to mind? Is it your family? Is it your friends? A uh, part. Family, friends. Another part of it is like my desire to follow my desire, my my desire to follow my desires and just be, you know, like you said in your experience, like be pure consciousness. Just be someone who's. I can still experiment everything. Like, oh, if I become a Muslim, I'm now gonna feel guilty about sure. this, this, or this. Like, do I want to have that guilt on me? But then I'm like, I already have that guilt. Like, so. <laughs> <laughs> like I already know. It's not like now I'm gonna be guilty because I say I'm a Muslim. Like I would have already been guilty. But I guess it's just like double. And then now I want to I want to uphold the religion if I start you know claiming I'm part of it. And so now I'm thinking, 
okay, so I'm going to be a living representation of this. I mean, like literally, you know, people, I'll, people, if I go to a mosque, like people will recognize me. If I like go to Home Depot, people are like, oh, you're Grayson. I've seen your videos. I'm like, this is a lot of pressure now. Like, whew, you know, but I want the pressure, you know, I want to become the best version of myself and, and do what's right. So it's also just as scary as it is. It's also exciting, but I think just fear and sooner or later, I'm just going to be like, well, there's no other choice. Yeah, inshallah. Yeah, yeah. you basically answered, answered the question right to yourself. I, I can completely relate to this because I had this fear as well. For me, because I didn't mention it previously, ultimately after the mosque visit, even though it was already super clear to me, the last, the last thing that happened to me was a dream. I don't know if you heard it when I talked about my dream. No, I haven't. People were like, you got to ask Bobby about his dream. Because I talked to Brandon okay. yesterday, he talked about a dream he had, which was crazy. That's interesting, yeah. Because I kept on denying, I kept on denying, I kept on denying it, right? Even though I know it is the truth, I knew it was the truth. And then I had this dream one night where I started essentially leaving my body. It was like an outer body experience. I started floating and out of a sudden I found myself over an Islamic city. And there were all those minarets, you know, those long minarets on the mosques. And I was floating over them and I was observing them. And out of a sudden, I heard the Adam, the call to prayer, which is the Shahada as well, right? But I didn't hear it from the mosques, but I heard it from my heart. And then it started building up, building up, becoming stronger and stronger and stronger. And it made its way up towards my throat and wanted to exit out of my mouth. But I started biting my teeth, clenching my teeth and holding my mouth even because I didn't want to pronounce it. I didn't want to declare it. But it overcame me completely and it didn't exit my mouth. However, it exited my heart. And then I heard it over all the rooftops of that city. Right? La ilaha illallah. Over the whole city. And then I woke up. And so then it was crystal clear to me that I'm a Muslim because my heart already wants to proclaim it. But I am keeping my mouth shut. And that was the last, essentially, yeah, straw that bro broke the camel's back, as they say. When, when, when you, I how can you relate this? I'm glad you've had psychedelic experiences because that's the only experience I've had. Like, is it like that? When you're saying you have a dream, a vision, like, you know, you're kind of like you just came out of a trip or is it un not even on the same yeah, I would say so, because the thing is, before I ever did psychedelics, I was very much into astral projection and lucid dreaming. So I was keeping dream journals, I was doing... And you've done it all. Daily yeah, pretty much, man. Except of heroin, but even in terms of <laughs> drugs, I did... Yeah, I did pretty much everything. Jellyfish, love from me to Bobby. Grayson, just revert already. No pressure. <laughs> so no love to Grayson until he reverts, no pressure. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I love this username. Falafel boys. Falafel boys. Salam alaikum. May, may, may Allah guide you, Grayson. Ask yourself, will you reject truth? You don't have to know everything in mathematics to solve every equation, if that makes sense. And I love Bobby for the sake of Allah. See how they're discriminating against you. They only love me now because you haven't reverted yet. <laughs> Discriminatory. It's okay. It's okay. Bigots. <laughs> yeah. I mean, ultimately, he is right. So, this is not something just to brush it off, you know. You cannot learn everything about Islam, probably not even in a lifetime. It's really the case. So, there's something that you will have to accept as well. It's vast. It's simple and it's deep. The essence you already understood. You understood already Tawhid. That's what the essence of the religion is. But to understand everything and to learn about every subject, I mean, they have jurisprudence within Islam. Right? So... You're not going to study to become a lawyer if you're not interested in that. But that's basically what it entails. It's part of the religion. Fiqh. Right? That's jurisprudence. Laws. So you cannot learn all of that. Maybe you can if you want to become somebody that is studying Fiqh. But moreover, then you might learn a whole new language. Arabic. Right? Or you might learn to recite the Quran, etc. Yeah. It's impossible to know every aspect of Islam. It really is. But that's not to deceive or to hide something like learn as much as you want to be convinced but i mean talking to you we already see that you understand you know the message is pretty clear lena grayson and bobby will you ever post fitness tips in gym slash mosque videos and maybe friends on the channel too or do you prefer to keep it all private i would like to post more gym videos and me working out and maybe do a train for another fight 
Um, nice. Inshallah, uh, that's great. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you used to make a bunch of gym content. I used to make a bunch of gym content, but nowadays I don't feel as vain as I used to. I don't want to sound too humble either, but I just really... I find it kind of cringe, gym content. Yeah. Nowadays, just to feel myself pumping iron, it's kind of boring. <laughs> Maybe some jiu-jitsu videos or so, inshallah, at some point. But, yeah. yeah I, I don't really have that need. And about friends or family, etc., I like to keep my private life separated from YouTube. So we were thinking about inviting my wife on, but I wouldn't show her either. So she would sit separately. Then that kind of defies the purpose as well. So yeah, I like to keep private. I don't show my kids on social media either. Yes, I would like to keep, when I have a family, inshallah, to keep that private. Keep it sacred. Yeah. Lena, Brother Bobby was adjusting to prayer hard. Similarly, Grayson, do you think the rules of Islam are hard or good? Would love to hear your thoughts. I, I do. It's definitely a switch up to go from not being required to pray at all and just praying whenever you want, maybe once at night, to thinking, okay, now f five times per day. So, I mean, hard relatively, but then when you think of if you believe in God and... I mean, you made a good point, Bobby. You said that it's not it's not for God, it's for you. I'm like, sure. oh, yeah, like that's a paradigm shift. Like it's you're not doing it to... You're doing it for yourself to keep yourself on track. And I think, I mean, if you do stick to five prayers a day, I don't see how you could ever go too far down any wrong path. Like, I don't see how your life could ever, you could never get, you know, oh, I, I had a downward spiral. Like, yep. even, even I've noticed, like, just being on my phone, when the times that I have actually stuck to the prayer times, you know, more or less, like, oh, it's time now. Just the act of, like, powering off my phone for a few minutes leave come back i'm like okay reset why was i on my phone okay let's get back to work like literally from a productivity standpoint so exactly. it is hard to follow but i think it's good me me wahi dad please be careful who you take your info from there are many deviant sects in islam who have altered the religion speak to people who follow the quran and sunnah who follow the way of the salif salif yeah the salif what is, what is salif salif Salaf are the rightly guided predecessors. Essentially, the Salaf are the three generations, if you will, of the followers of the Prophet. So the early generations, ultimately. The people that have been upon the truth. Okay, okay. Yeah. So, but however, you have a Salafi movement that claims exclusivity, if you will, and says that they are the only ones that are following exactly those teachings exactly the original teachings but what you will notice is that if you go into different schools of thought actually everybody makes that claim because everybody claims that they are following the Quran and the teachings of the Prophet everybody claims that it's not like a deviant sect will say we are following something different they will say no this is exactly what we follow however the way that they're following it is slightly different yet again right so the Salafi movement is a relatively new movement and in a way, it is a bit reminiscent of the Protestant movement within Christianity. But it's a long subject. You don't really have to bother yourself with sectarianism, yeah. especially because the Quran itself proclaims that you shouldn't fall into sectarianism. That the Ummah will fall into sectarianism, but you shouldn't fall. You should be a Muslim. Right? To clarify, Allah rose above his throne and that is where he established himself. He is not everywhere. Sir 754 and many more verses. And nobody said that he is everywhere. We know that his knowledge, if you will, is everywhere. So he perceives everything. A more scientific term would be probably, or spiritual term would be consciousness. His consciousness is everywhere. But nevertheless, Allah describes as well that he is descending, right, to the lowest heavens, etc. So there are certain descriptions about Allah. It's not only that he is now above his throne, and that's the only description of Allah, and that's where he is. Point blank, end of story. Right? There are many different descriptions about Allah within the Quran. Jazakallah khair, Abu Bobby, Wayyak. For all the indirect dawah you provide on your channel, may Allah grant you Janatul Firdaus. So, Janatul Firdaus, if you don't know, is the highest level of Jannah, the highest level of paradise. Yeah, Wayyak, thank you very much for that, brother. See, that's the thing. In Islam, it is a component that you get reward. And even Jesus spoke about that in the Bible as well, that you will get your reward. For me personally, it's really not about reward. I'm not wired that way. So it's a beautiful side 
edition side quest, if you will, to get the reward. But for me, it's really just about doing the right thing in the eyes of God. And the only reward that I'm looking for is to return back to my creator when I die. That's it. So I'm not really looking for the highest level of this, the whatever achieve, achievement unlocked. I generally don't mind. What I mind is being on the right path and doing the right thing and being within truth because I believe in objective truth. So I want to follow that truth. That's what it's really about. And if that is indirect dawah, then subhanAllah, even better. <laughs> yeah, amen. I agree. Just want to honestly share my perspective and try to get closer to objective truth. I'm, I agree on that. All right, guys, but this is it for today's video. If you liked it, leave the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Check out the links in the description box below to further support my work. Thank you very much for that. And as always, guys, may God bless you all. Much love and peace. <laughs>